Docker dashboards allow you to have GUI management and configuration of your Docker hosts, as well as the Docker containers that you have running on those hosts. While we all know and love the Docker command line, it is exceptionally nice to have a GUI management tool that allows you to configure and have visibility to things such as networking, container performance, storage, and many other aspects of your Docker environment, as well as the ability to easily deploy new Docker containers, even using Docker Compose. Today, I'm going to give you guys an overview comparison of two Docker container dashboards that allow you to have those features and functionality in managing your Docker environment. Those are Yacht and Portainer. Before we dive into the comparison, the sponsor for today's episode is Cameo. Cameo is a virtual app delivery platform that allows businesses to have a secure and cost-effective cloud desktop solution, and it delivers what businesses and end users need the most. Not full virtual machines, but business-critical applications. Cameo's virtual application delivery platform enables your end users to quickly and easily access all of the Windows and internal web applications they need securely from a modern web browser within any digital workspace and without the need for VPN connections. Cameo reduces costs, it increases flexibility, and allows you to deliver legacy or modern Windows apps in a browser or Chrome OS environment with one-click failover to the cloud. This is an awesome solution that I foresee heavily disrupting traditional VDI infrastructure environments. Be sure to visit cameo.com and sign up for a free trial to try out the solution for yourself. Before comparing these solutions, we need to first get them installed. So that's where our comparison can actually begin. What are the installation experiences like between Portainer and Yacht? They're both very similar, and I'm going to step you guys through that process. We will consider the documentation provided by both Portainer and Yacht. Looking first at Portainer, let's look and see what are the options that we have for installing Portainer. If you look at the Portainer documentation, you can see that we can install Portainer on a Docker standalone host, we can install it into Docker Swarm, and we can also make use of Kubernetes. For the Portainer installation that we're going to demonstrate today, we're going to pick the Docker standalone option. Install Portainer with Docker on Linux. And we're going to scroll down and make sure that you have Community Edition selected. This is the free and open source version of Portainer. As we can see, the installation of Portainer is a simple one-line command. One of the things I really like about the Portainer Docker installation is by default, Portainer spins up both an HTTP as well as an HTTPS connection to that Docker container, which is really nice. We don't have to do any further work if we want to just simply use the self-signed certificate with the container. So I'm going to copy that command and we're simply just going to paste that command into our terminal. Let's look at this command briefly. We see that we're issuing a docker run command, so it's going to pull the latest container if it's not available locally. We're going to restart always, and we're also setting up a local volume for our portainer data. So let's just execute this command. And as we see, the portainer container is spun up, and if we issue a docker ps, we have the portainer container up and running. So we should be able to navigate out. 9443, we get the self-signed certificate error, which means we have the uh, endpoint that's listing, and we have the Portainer password configuration. So we now have our Portainer Docker container up and running, ready to configure our Portainer instance. So now let's pivot over to the Yacht installation and see what that process looks like. The installation of Yacht is equally easy as was the installation of Portainer. In fact, it's very similar in the process itself. Just looking at the installation documentation to install Yacht, we can see the various options that we have. Notice we can install via Docker, we can install with Open Media Vault, with Docker Compose, Doc Starter. Also interesting with Yacht that an option that we don't have with Portainer, at least officially, is the ability to install in Podman. So you've got that ability as well following the Yacht installation documentation. 
So I'm going to go back to the install yacht via Docker. And as you know, the installation is almost identical as the installation of Portainer. Also equally interesting is that with Yacht, they realize that most likely ones that are going to be playing around and trying out Yacht may already be running Portainer. As they mentioned in their official documentation, if you're already running Portainer, then you need to change from port 8000 to 8001 as they use the same HTTP port as does Portainer. So interesting in their documentation, they note that. So that's what we're going to do is change to port 8001 just to avoid that conflict with Portainer. One downside with Yacht, you do not get a default HTTPS port alongside the HTTP port. So let's copy our command and we're gonna go back to our putty session that we have open here. And I'm going to paste in the command to install Yacht. As noted, I'm already running Portainer as we already saw. So we're going to change our external port to port 8001 that will transpose into port 8000 on the internal side for Yacht. And the same as Portainer, we have persistent data that is also generated uh, by means of the installation. So let's run the install. And the latest image had already been pulled down earlier in my testing. So we've already got the Docker container spun up. We do a Docker PS. We can see that we have indeed a yacht instance up and running. I'm going to go to uh, the host and port 8001. And I did HTTPS. So let's take the S off. And we see that we have the dialog box to log into yacht. Now, one other slight nitpick or downside of the yacht installation. One thing I like about Portainer is it automatically prompts you to change the default password. We don't get that with yacht. In fact, if you go back to the documentation, the default login they have set for you. And so it's admin at yacht.local and the password is simply pass. Then as we can see, we now are logged in successfully to Yacht. So just a little bit of a downside there, we can now change that password once we have that connection established, but it would be nice and I'm sure that is additional tweaks and enhancements coming in the future for that process, that workflow to be just a little bit more seamless there. Now let's look at the features and capabilities of both the Yacht interface as well as Portainer. Let's look at Yacht first. With Yacht, as we just finished installing, we now see the Yacht dashboard after logging in with the default login. One of the things I really like about Yacht, just out of the box, you have a really nice graphical dashboard of all of your containers running on your container host. And I like how Yacht shows you each of the containers. It shows the CPU usage as well as the memory usage in a graphical format. That's a nice touch because you can just quickly look and see if you've got a container that's running away with CPU usage or memory usage. So it's really nice to see that in the default dashboard interface. Everything is driven from the left hand menu, which is really nice. I would like to see the ability to pin this left menu so that you don't have to keep popping it out, especially when you're new to the interface. It would be nice to be able to pin this so you can see the full names of the menus. But going down from the top, we were just at the dashboard, the overview dashboard. Let's go down to applications. And here we can see all of our container applications that we have running. We see the lifecycle management that we have available. We can edit the container, start, stop, restart, kill, or remove the container. Really nice view of the uh, status of the container, the image that it's using when it was created, as well as the networking configurations, which is really nice if you just want to, in a overview manner, just see all of your networking, your ports configured, all of that good stuff. Uh, we can change how many we can see in this view. We can uh, change the status of what columns we actually see displayed. We can uh, look add updates for the containers. We can refresh the interface. Uh, all of those things we can do from the Yacht Applications dashboard. Now the templates is interesting as well. Here with the templates, when we go to configure a new template, we can actually pull templates from online from the GitHub repository, or we can create our own templates with Shipwright. One thing to note out of the box, it would be nice if we saw with Yacht predefined templates. So like we will see with Portainer, 
out of the box, you automatically have access to templates that you can quickly and easily install. However, with Yacht by default, you don't get any templates but you do have the ability to add as many templates as you want. Just something to note there. With projects, what we have is the ability to add Docker Compose templates to our Yacht configuration. So we can paste our Docker Compose code in this interface. We can submit that and create that as a new template in our Yacht configuration. Uh, one thing with Yacht that's a strong suit is the ability to work with templates projects and be able to quickly and easily deploy new projects into your Docker environment. Under the resources view, we have all of the expected things that we would like to see. Uh, those include images and I like how in this view you can see which volumes are no longer used or are not used. And as you can see, I have a lot of cleanup to do. These are just containers I've spun up, spun down. The same for images. You can see what you're using, what you're not using. Networks, you can see those easily, uh, which networks you have configured, when they were created, what type of network. Under settings, we have a lot of the configuration for Yacht here. Uh, we can set our server configuration, display theme, template variables. We have those. We can uh, choose how we prune images, networks, volumes, containers, and of course, we can update the Yacht instance uh, using Watchtower. A lot of nice features here uh, with Yacht in a Docker dashboard. I really like the uh, simplicity and the great overview that you get of your containers. One of the things, and I didn't mention this underneath the applications that Yacht mentions on their documentation page, is you don't have the ability to exec to a CLI from the Yacht interface. And that's something, as we will see, we can do with Portainer. Uh, so I imagine in the future we're going to have the uh, ability to exec to that CLI interface from this apps dashboard or from another location. And that would be a nice touch that's trailing behind what we can do in Portainer as far as interacting with those containers. Portainer is certainly the more seasoned of the two products. Portainer is extremely fully featured and you can do a lot of things with Portainer as a Docker dashboard or even a Kubernetes environment. Let's just look at the Portainer interface. Uh, one thing I will say, I like the default yacht view of your containers as far as the metrics that it shows in its default home dashboard that it gives even a little bit better than Portainer. However, Portainer has a wealth of information here on the home dashboard. You get the stacks, the images, the networks. Uh, you can click on your containers mm -hmm. and from the containers view, you can click the statistics or stats and actually let it populate the statistics of your individual containers from that view. But as you can see, it drops you into the containers menu at that point. However, from the dashboard, you still get a wealth of information. You can jump to any component of the configuration that you want to take a look at. Dropping down through the menus, one of the things that Portainer really does a nice job of uh, compared to Yacht is if you will remember in Yacht, we didn't get any default templates for deploying applications. However, with Portainer, when you install it on a Docker host under the app templates, you get a wealth of templates that you can automatically install by default. You don't have to point to a specific GitHub URL or uh, add your own URLs for those templates. These are just included by default. So it's a lot of the applications that most would want to deploy as a Docker container on their Docker host. So that's a really nice feature of Portainer mm -hmm. that you get out of the box. On the containers menu, of course, we get a listing of all of our containers, all of the relevant information when it was created, the IP address, GPUs, ownership, and like Yacht, you get the network information, which ports are configured. And again, one of the things that I really like about Portainer is we have this exec console feature that we were talking about missing in Yacht. So with the exec 
console feature, we can actually exec into our Docker container right from our portainer console, which is really nice. So if you need to do something in the CLI, you can do that directly from your portainer dashboard. And of course, images, we get much of the same that we get with Yacht. We get the images that we've used. We get ones that are not used, the tags, networking information, uh, very similar. We can see which networks are configured and the volumes like Yacht. We can see which volumes we have provisioned, those that are unused, as well as events from the portainer platform itself. Also, you get from the host menu, you get details of your Docker container host, which is also really nice. The engine details setup screen. We can configure additional uh, settings for our portainer instance and as well as registries. We can add our own registries if we want there. So a lot of nice bells and whistles that we get with the portainer Docker dashboard solution, which Docker dashboard is your choice. Hopefully this video overview of the similarities as well as the differences between Yacht and Portainer are helpful to you. I'd be curious to know which solutions you are using in your home lab environments. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. Please do like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you guys soon.